So last year for NPR's website, I did a story about creating the Hobbit meals and I outlined what we did for 2013, which is my third annual Hobbit Meals and Lord of the Rings Marathon. And even though every year I claim I will never do Hobbit Meals again because it's exhausting, I am doing them for the fourth time. I created a Facebook event for the fourth annual Lord of the Rings Marathon and Hobbit Meals. So we are scheduled to do first breakfast at 8.30, first movie at nine o'clock with Fellowship of the Ring, second breakfast at 10, 11 Z's at of course 11. 1 p.m. we start Two Towers, the extended cut, which is 223 minutes. 2 p.m. you get lunch, 4 p.m. you get afternoon tea, 5 p.m. you start Return of the King, extended cut, 250 minutes. 6 p.m. you get dinner, 8 p.m. supper immediately followed by dessert. If you would like to put on some Hobbit meals to celebrate the new Hobbit movie, it takes a lot of food, as you can see. This is, like you have first breakfast and second breakfast, this was second shopping. First shopping was the meat. Um, as you know, meat's back on the menu, boys. Very important, uh, you need your bacon, you need your beef, you need your pork, you need your lamb. The best way to go about prepping for Hobbit meals at the shopping level, I found, is you put all your recipes together. After picking the recipes, I created a three-page shopping list for Hobbits. They're little, but they eat a lot. Hobbits you have to think of as like birds, like hummingbirds. They burn a lot of energy, so they eat a lot. And when you put on a Hobbit meal, you're basically eating every two hours if you want to fit all seven Hobbit meals plus dessert. Bacon is key to all Hobbit cooking. Butter, lots of butter, lots of cream. This is Middle Earth Recipes. It's a website. It's put together by Lord of the Rings and Hobbit fans. And I highly recommend this as the place to go for the starting point for any Hobbit meal marathon. Not only are the recipes authentic in terms of something that might be appropriate to find at one of the establishments in the Lord of the Rings world, but it also has a great sense of humor. So this is the recipe for 10 cup ranger cookies, which is one of my favorites, not just because it tastes good, but because the recipe itself is fun. It says in the description, this is for rangers in the field who only have one measuring cup with them. This is one of the easiest cookie recipes you will ever have because it's literally 10 cups with two eggs added and you throw everything into a bowl and that's it. A cup of butter and then a cup of peanut butter. This hobbit doesn't have a lot of sous chefs helping out so we don't have everything already pre-measured. <laughs> and then we add two types of sugar, regular white sugar and brown sugar. All right, and then we add the eggs and we will blend that. and your one cup of self-rising self -rising flour. And now you can add some of the fun stuff. So there's coconut and one cup of oatmeal. And you have your choice. You can either add rolled oats or quick oats. Quick oats will be softer, rolled oats will be crunchier. I go for crunchier. And chocolate chips. and a coarsely chopped nut of your choice. Walnuts and pecans seem to be the best. Okay, the recipe calls for your 10th cup to be raisins. I am not a big raisin fan, so what I usually do is add an extra half cup of nuts and an extra half cup of chocolate chips. All right, so that is your 10 cup ranger cookie dough, which you will drop by about tablespoon size full onto a lined cookie sheet and cook for 13 minutes at 350 degrees and you will have 10 cup ranger cookies to serve for dessert. Okay, one of the dishes that you wanna prepare early, way in advance, is Balin's beef. And that's because it needs to marinate for at least 12 to 24 hours. This is a lot of meat. This is for the orcs that might be stopping by as well as your hobbits. These are tri-tips, and you wanna cover the meat with red wine. And what you wanna add to this is some white onion slices, a couple of bay leaves, 
one teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon allspice, half a teaspoon cloves, and some salt and pepper. And what I add to this is some mixed spices, Mexican spices, that make it taste pretty good. So we're gonna add a pack of that to this as well. That has some bay leaves, some mustard, some pepper, some chili, and that just adds a little more spice to it. Put this in a roasting pan and cover it to cook for three hours. But it's a super easy dish, except for the time factor. And then, of course, my fun favorite recipe, which is mushrooms a la Gandalf. This is basically just mushrooms, pretty much. Mushrooms and butter, can't complain about that. They do like portobellos. This is your mushroom of choice. And the reason you want portobellos is because they are nice meaty mushrooms. This may be a vegetarian dish, but with portobellos in it, it's gonna taste like a meat dish. And the great thing about this one is that it says you need to cover and cook the mushrooms on medium. Cook them to death. Use your staff if you have to. Well, I don't have Gandalf's staff, but this was the longest spoon I could find. And this will serve as my staff to stir the mushrooms because you have to cook them until they are black, till everything turns black. Those are the instructions. One of the recipes I've added to the Hobbit meals that's not from the Middle Earth recipes is what we call affectionately PWP. And this is pork wrapped pork. It's uh, based off of a Jamie Oliver recipe and it's pork that's gonna be stuffed with butter, thyme, garlic, and peaches, and then wrapped in bacon to be cooked. And when I say garlic, I don't mess around with garlic. Thyme takes a lot of time. Uh, you want fresh thyme and you wanna just pull all the little leaves off and put them in here. And then you're gonna get to a really messy part, which is where you go in with your hands and mash this all up because this is what you're gonna stuff the pork with. So you wanna cut a opening in this so that you can stuff that in and you are going to just stuff it into this little slit that you've made. As I mentioned, bacon is an important part of any kind of hobbit feasting. That's why I added the pork wrap pork to the menu. You've got your pork and it's stuffed with your butter mixture, but in order to help keep that mixture in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it in bacon. This is also gonna add a nice smoked flavor to the pork. You'll get a nice crisp bacon wrap around the pork. Not for the faint of heart. And when you actually cook it, you're gonna pour some white wine over this and cook it in the oven. One last thing, if you happen to know someone who works at a foundry, I was lucky enough to know Jim Wilsterman over at Grossmont College and his student, Josh David, who actually forged an orc sword for me. So this comes in really handy when you wanna cut Balin's beef, or if you have any unwanted guests, uh, this is used to pull down uh, riders from their horses, but this makes a, um, a really good centerpiece and when you need to cut the meat. That got my attention. <laughs> The key to eating Hobbit meals is pacing yourself. The mistake I made the very first year I did Hobbit meals, I made each of the meals a full-on meal. So needless to say, by 11 Z's, we were in a food coma. So what I've learned and what I highly recommend is when you do these meals, you narrow them down. So that means if you're eating every two hours, it's a much more reasonable amount of food and you only reach the food coma by dinner and supper. So you still got blood. <laughs> <laughs>